to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel scattered abroad in the name of Jehovah our Creator and Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King who rules the world, Lily of the Valley here bringing you greeting. And today we're going to prove to you that the Shemites or the Negroes, today's Hebrews, Israelites, early Christians, they were in the Americas first from the days of creation to the days after the flood, to the first Christians, to the days of Solomon, to the explorers. You'll find that in the lands where never mankind dwelt, had some of the richest minerals, food, people, and they were always black. Because after the earth was divided, the most I gave Shem some of the greatest portions, such as Ophir, Orzareth and um, Tarshish where the gold and stuff was you'll find that a lot of that was where the children of Israel went some people say Peru is over some people say it's in the Philippines or the Pacific either way the most I said the Ottoman Sea is where um, the children of Israel were going to be so you can search for like Hebrew artifacts in the Americas and Phoenician artifacts in the Americas. And the word America didn't come from Amerigo Vespucci. It was in existence long before him. Also the term West Indies. Remember West Indies encompass all the West and West Indians today are still Negroes. It wasn't just the islands that were called West Indies. It was the entire West. It was also called West India because as Josephus tells you in page 605 in the complete works of Flavius Josephus that the Israelites or the Jews were also called Indians, different from East Indians who are also called coolies on this side of the earth. Negroes are also called West Indians from the West Indies or West India different from the East Indies, okay? So we're gonna look at some of that today where you see the history of where the word America came from. This is hopeofisrael.org, first century Britain and the gospel of the Messiah. So it says the Sonini manuscript continues the story of Paul's mission. It says Paul and Peter, they also came to Britain. Notice most West Indians are also Britons because um, they knew where their lands were that Shem controlled, which is why West Indians, Negroes are in all countries to this day. And you can see when we were exiled out of Europe and Great Britain during the Inquisition and so on. But our forefathers were in Britain and the Americas long before um the european caucasian explorers got there so this is one manuscript showing paul's mission as they departed out of spain and paul and his company finding a ship in america sailing into britain they went therein and passing along the south coast they reached a port called raffinus it is interesting to note the mention of a place called america in the manuscript the fact that there was another america back in the time of paul is understood by a number of historians in the marginal notes on page seven of Beatty's ecclesiastical history of england this america is identified as follows in caesar's time the whole district line along the northwestern coast of gaul afterwards narrowed down to modern Brittany. The fact that the United States is known as America to most people today is no coincidence. The America of old was peopled by descendants of the Israelites, as is the America of today. A number of other writers affirm that the gospel entered Britain by way of Brittany or America. So, the exact location of Raffinus mentioned in the manuscript is uncertain some identify this as the roman name of sandwich in kent 
a port in this vicinity is known to have been used by the Romans during the first century AD. An old house is said to have existed at Sandwich until Saxon times, which was known as the House of the Apostles. And that source is the incredible history of God's true church, page 84. So this is um, another source as well, or Neglected Heritage by Gladys Taylor. So we see that um, Portsmouth and Paul's Grove and all those things came over with the um, pilgrims. A lot of the pilgrims, we were pilgrims in the earth from the time of Christ, from the first century until now. So how we come back to the fact that Shem, Shem... Um, and Britain had part of Shem's portion. You can look at the Chronicles of Jeremiel, page 83. And it says, Eber, the Hebrew language in Eber, the Egyptian in Egypt, Greek in Greece, Latin in Rome, and Aramean in Syria, the Chaldean in Chaldea. Those were the language of Shem, Hanam, Japheth. The nations which descended from Shem were Britannia. Calabra, Toscana, Luca, Pique, Nasa, etc. So Britannia was also part of Shem. And Shem the eldest chose his portion part of Asia. And also the land of Persia from Bactris to Indiana. Remember Indiana again? And remember Joseph said, Joseph says we were called Indians. And we're still called West Indians to this day. And we're still Negroes to this day. From the Persian River unto the ocean in the west and the whole Rhine. So the oceans in the west would be the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. That's Shem's territory. Those were predominantly black areas. Let's see. So if you're looking at the ocean to the west and even the Bible says the uttermost sea is where our coast is going to be. The Caribbean islands, a lot of them like Jamaica, is surrounded by the Caribbean Sea all by itself. Then that is close to the Atlantic Ocean. Then you have some Negritas also in the Pacific Ocean. And a lot of those places, they say, was the ancient Ophir. Okay? So the Atlantic Ocean is home to several islands that are scattered throughout the ocean. Some of the island countries situated in the Atlantic are Cuba, the United Kingdom, Iceland, Sotomay, and Principal Pay. Bahamas, Cape Verde, Ireland, Trinidad and Tobago, and Barbados. All these countries, Israelites have been there from several thousands of years to this day. Because whenever our four parents have to flee, they always had brethren in countries all over the earth to flee to. Okay? So you can look at all the countries listing the border in the Atlantic Ocean. Israelites are there. Pacific Ocean, Israelites are there. Even in India, East India, the Israelites were there during the time of Esther and so on. They were in Persia. They were in Arabia. They were in all of Africa. They were in the Americas from the time of um, creation. But when it says the children, the 10 tribes were going to be scattered to Arzareth, a land where never mankind dwelt. That's talking about the Americas because people dwelt in Europe, they dwelt in India, they dwelt in Ethiopia, Africa, and so on. And he said the children of Israel were also going to occupy the islands of the sea. The Caribbean alone, that's more than 7,000 islands. We don't even talk about the Pacific Islands yet, much less all the other islands closer to Africa. So the Most High's word is always true. So in Josephus as well, he said the gold from Ophir, Ophir was also called the Golden Chersonese. The Golden Chersonese or the Golden Chersonese ancient Greek, meaning the Golden Peninsula was the name used for the Malay Peninsula. Some people call it Malay Peninsula. And that is... Um, Close to the Pacific again, and a whole lot of Negritos from the beginning of time lived there. The Solomon Islands, the Philippines, all those places. Some also say um, 
the gold of Ophir comes from Peru. It comes from the Caribbean islands that were filled with gold. Remember, the, all the great empires took their gold from the Americas. The silver, the gold, the, the lead, all those precious um, things came out of the Americas. They say, um, what does that golden city called El Dorado? They say that's in the Americas too. So they got their names from these things. But Shem was the one that was in charge. And they also sealed with the Phoenicians. Because the Phoenicians were hired by Solomon to bring the gold. So you have the Negritos still there. And in that area, Malaysia has some of them. Philippines, Luzon, Palawan, Pane, Negros, Mandanio. Thailand and you have a lot of the Solomon Islands okay that still have um, a lot of the Negrito people now even though they look alike some tribes you gotta still go into to know who are their foreparents what are their cultures or they got there and so on but these people are the same people as the Caribbean Negroes we make the thatch huts and the water and daub and the bow and arrow. That's technology that comes from Shem as well. So when they tell you that America was named after Amerigo Vespucci in the 1500s, you already know that's discredited because the name was in use from the days of Paul or before that. And Jamaica right now is like the capital of Christendom in the earth. You have some of the earliest explorers there in America. Again, if you look at this Daily Motion video, it's America Unearthed. You have the finding the lead crosses, America Unearthed. They had um, the Desert Cross. Watch that video. You see um, these crosses appeared. In the 700s to 800s, crosses, swords, and other relics pulled from the desert in the 1920s. So you had the Israelites who were already familiar with America here. You have Mandeville, one of the early explorers from the 1200s. And you have the children of Israel in the Americas, the 10 northern tribes, plus the other tribes familiar with this area of the earth to this day. So you have when the Puritans came, they went to, and they set up a commonwealth in Massachusetts, a theocracy. The theocracy is a form of government of the Israelites. All right. So the Church of England, that's still where our churches in the islands are called. Those were the ruling churches. And they set up a colony in Virginia in 1619. And they sent 22 Anglican clergymen by, by 1624. Most of our family, they were Anglicans, Puritans. They keep the Sabbath. And it says they had a local vestry consisted of laymen control the parish. We still have parishes. So wherever you see the word parish, you know, Israelites are there. Most of the islands are still divided into parishes, Louisiana, and so on. Okay. And in the Caribbean. Parish is from parishioner meaning church goer so it says also that the puritans a group which later became known as the pilgrim set up Plymouth, Plymouth colony in massachusetts 1620 some of them went into the islands some of them stayed the puritans they use like the um, new england primer if you want to look at josephus it tells you all the the, the israelites where they went when they went so the Puritans were English Protestants who wished to reform and purify the Church of England in the New World. And that which they considered to be unacceptable residues of Roman Catholics. That's why we chant down Babylon, because Babylon is Rome and we stick to the Bible. You know what I mean? So it says some of them most settled in new england and some went to the west indies remember west indies is the same as west india okay you have the west india trading company and those things so in this book you still have um calabar where you find that name or calabra 
you find it in Jamaica, you'll find it among the Nigerians, and you'll find it among Shem. So these names are coming back from antiquity until now, okay? So you can um, see from that that the Hebrews have been in America in the islands in the Caribbean you can search for Phoenician artifacts in Jamaica Hebrew artifacts in Jamaica or the Americas it will show you exactly that um, the Israelites have been over here for like thousands of years from exactly after the flood you even have some Israelites bringing sugarcane from a far country who is it that grows sugarcane you know or sweet cane so if you want to know the origin of the when Paul preached and Peter preached in Britain, I know it was called America long before the Caucasians or the Catholics got here. It's called the last chapter of the Acts of the Apostles known as the Sonini Manuscript. It's a short text purporting to be the translation of a manuscript containing the 29th chapter of the Acts of the apostles detailing Paul the apostles journey to Britannia where he preached to a tribe of Israelites on Lodge Gate Hill the site of St. Paul's Cathedral we still have Jamaicans to this day 